Hello! This is another music analysis and composition tutorial. Analysis of this slow introduction music reveals a multi-level ternary structure plus a number of harmonic, melodic and instrumentation elements. These are used to create new, contemporary idiom example compositions. One day I was listening to the excellent German radio station NDR Kultur that plays classical, contemporary jazz and world music. I heard an intriguing, tragic mood piece of strings dominated music and from the idiom I concluded that it must be from a movie. Then the presenter revealed it was the Einleitung to the third act from Richard Wagner's opera Tristan und Isolde. I'd listened to the full opera before, read along with the score and of course studied the famous Vorspiel with the Tristan chord and the closing Isolde's Liebestod, but had not been aware of the special character of the prelude to the act 3. So I decided to have a closer look at that music, which is what I present in this tutorial. We will look at various aspects. I will discuss its form harmony, melody phrases and instrumentation. After identifying the musical elements, I will reuse these and apply them in two example compositions. The prelude is 55 measures long in 4-4 four -four time signature. The key is F minor. The form reveals a multi-level ternary form. On a global scale we have three sections of different length and A a accent B or, if you prefer, A, A, A accent structure. At an intermediate level and based on the thematic material within each section, we also find ternary structure A, B, C, A, B, C and A, A, B. Finally, looking at the melody phrases, again there is ternary structure, where a phrase is repeated and then varied. This is a common characteristic of and a well-known quality in classical music. That makes it quite different from loop-based music, where addition of elements or a gradual longer-term modification of a basic pattern is the rule. Now it's time to listen to a MIDI sample mock-up of the piece. The tempo is about 25% faster than the Deutsche Grammophon recording, to keep things practical for this tutorial. But be aware that the very slow tempo, mesik langsam, significantly contributes to its intriguing and somber mood character. I will show an annotated condensed score and talk you through the piece. That's a safety measure. The last time I did a more or less decent rendering of classical music, there was, within 24 hours, a copyright infringement claim. The opening is for strings only, playing plagal cadences, a ternary lead melody and with a unique sound that we will study later in greater detail. Now the main theme A is modified into a new element B, the ascending violins in parallel. The contrasting element in section 1 is the melodic phrase C used in imitation over a harmonic sequence. The start of section 2 brings back the original string setting. Note that Wagner now writes different dynamics. The ascending violins gradually introduce a move to the lowered 6th degree D flat major. The contrasting subsection has the imitation in a different key and with a fresh mixed instrumentation. Section 3 
Section 3 is a miniature development or variation of the main theme. Cellos take the lead and the orchestra builds up to the prelude climax. With a new theme variation over an extended dominant chord C7 flat 9, we are concluding the Einleitung. The ascending violins are now preparing the transition to scene 1. The Morendo descent over a full cadence leads into a longer solo for a new instrument, the English horn. I will stop the piece at this point. In the next part of the analysis, I will zoom in on some details. The opening measures are based on the plagal cadence in F minor. Have a look at the ambiguous pitch G in the first violins. It may be interpreted as the sixth of a B flat minor sixth chord, which is the label I used in the score. Alternatively, it may be considered an appoggiatura into the A flat creating a B flat minor 7 chord on the 4th beat. Or the G is the root of an inverted G half diminished chord. So the cadence is 4 to 1 or 2 to 1 in minor. The voicing shows contrary motion in the strings. The violins use appoggiaturas and passing tones. And finally, Wagner notates very detailed dynamics that are different for each statement of this phrase. However, it's the instrumentation for low register strings that triggered my fascination for this prelude. Here we see both the score fragment and the string fingering diagrams on the right. Note how all instruments are using their lowest strings, creating a sinister, tragic and gloomy texture. Violins start on open G string. This yields a special sound without vibrato. Tone control is fully determined by bowing technique. First violins remain on this string for the first melody phrase. Second violins play a sustained open string G Violas, a fifth position F on the lowest string. Cellos play divisi, one half again on the lowest string. The stepwise descent from D flat to C affirms the F minor key. Finally, 
basses play a first position leap into the low F. The strings combined yield a fascinating unique sound. Starting in measure 5, the violins emerge from the deep with an ascending parallel voicing, full of diatonic passing tones and semitone directional units. This leads into the high register. Non-chordal tones are marked with plus signs. Minor second directional units, terminology from the Schillinger system of musical composition, yield augmented steps. The decrescendo ends in pianissimo on the upper string. Finally, let's zoom in on the contrasting subsection. The prelude uses sparse instrumentation with strings, four horns, one oboe, two clarinets and two bassoons. The melodic phrase is presented in imitation. There's a harmonic sequence with roots at two semitones below, here D flat, B and A. Voice leading in the parts is dominated by chromatic stepwise descending motion, a contrast with the earlier string parts. We see mixed instrumentation, combining woodwinds, horns and strings. Many subtle details are notated in the score. This is a setting and scoring technique we will find in Berlioz, Mahler and Richard Strauss, and therefore in many older Hollywood movies from the 1940s and 50s. The violas are split into solo versus others in the visi. Now let's try and reuse these same elements in new compositions. There's one example with a similar instrumentation and tonal register. It's film music cue in A flat major called a Gloomy Night in Drizzly Downtown that I will not discuss here in detail. It is based on a Wagner style chord progression with altered and extended chords. The full score is on my website, the audio demo on SoundCloud. You should be able to identify and recognize the by now familiar musical elements. As an alternative, these elements may return in a different instrumentation, in a contemporary acoustic electronic idiom. In the 2 minutes 45 seconds example composition in F minor that I will play in a moment, there is the ternary form and the irregular phrasing of subsections and melodies, as I have observed so often in Brahms music. The saxophone quartet plays plagal cadences in minor, but now with the position of the minor and minor six chords swapped. There's the ternary AAA phrasing of a lead melody, and there's contrary motion. The setting is an octave above the Wagner original.
The ascending motion is now for synthesizer bells and electric piano that play a three-part imitation of an arpeggiated chord with passing tones and semitone directional units. The Tristan melody motif returns in the contrasting setting with imitating synthesizer leads and rhythm section support from acoustic guitar, bass guitar and synth pad. Harmonically there is the sequence over symmetrically divided roots, here A flat, E and C, and the chromatically descending lower parts. When we combine all these elements in a short composition, we get the following condensed score with audio. In summary, we analyzed the intriguing, tragic prelude to the Tristan Act 3. We identified the characteristic musical elements, such as the ternary form, the wonderful instrumentation and the focus on notational details. Then I applied the same elements to two example compositions, of which one was discussed here in detail. That concludes this episode. As always. Please subscribe to my channel, like and share this video or support my efforts. There is more to discover on this channel and on my website. Thanks for watching.